Now once again we do a quick check of units, we've got mass divided by mass, so that gives us nothing, and we've got velocity equals velocity, so that works well, and it's fairly obviously the same on the bottom line. Let's also check limits, there are lots of limits we can pick, so to start with, let's assume that the first mass isn't moving, which means the second mass just goes straight up into it, and then we'd expect them to go straight up. So if we look down at our equations down here, if the first mass wasn't moving, that would be zero, so this would be zero. And so this thing here would not be moving sideways, which is correct, uh, and it would be moving straight up instead. However, if this mass, say, was zero, we'd expect no matter how fast it was going, it wouldn't really change the trajectory of the first particle. So if we go down here and set mass two to zero, then what we get is that this is zero, because the top line there is zero, and so we'd find that it would be going only in the horizontal direction. And indeed, it'd be going the same velocity it always was. So in other words, if this had zero mass, even when they're stuck together, the velocity of the first mass would be unchanged, like a tiny insect running into a truck. And that's exactly what our equations say, so the limits look good. And if we wanted to work out the angle at which these two masses move after they stick together, then we can easily work that out in terms of the components because what we have up here is the y component of velocity and the x component of the velocity. And so the tan of theta is going to be the ratio of those two, which is just going to be... And so you can see that the tan of that angle is just going to be the ratio of the momenta of the two particles.